Hey, I'm Mark. In this video, I'm going to talk about the making of the fourth music video I shot with Tegan and Sarah, and it's called Smoking Weed Alone. Smoking weed alone, I'm in the woods. Wonder, wonder if I get clean again. Now, the cool thing about this video is it's a first person POV and was shot with a helmet rig with a camera right in front of my face and I'm the person in the video, so it's my hands and I'm the guy running around. Also, I wanted to make this video seem like it was this trippy one continuous take with unbroken action, so there's actually 11 hidden cuts within the video, maybe 10. Running down a dream. So it had to be highly choreographed, so each cut happened at an exact time in the video. So it was challenging, but made it really cool. If it's such choice, don't really feel so this video went through a whole bunch of treatments over the course of a few months. The original concept was given to me by Teen and Sarah, and we were gonna film outside of Calgary in this like trippy Badlands area. We even had a concept where we were gonna film on an island in Vancouver, and I fell in love with this concept that I had that did these day for night transitions. It was really kind of trippy, and I kept on kind of pushing it um, as, a, as a viable idea. Running down the street, it's just a dream. Think I think I need to wake up again. But in the end, it was a bit too ambitious for what we were gonna try and pull off. So the way we came up with this concept that we actually went with was on a video call. Tegan, Sarah, and I were brainstorming, and Sarah had to leave the call for a moment. So Tegan and I were talking about, I think like a therapy session, kind of like fight club group therapy meeting. Sarah jumped back on the call, and she ruined everything. This is cancer, right? And she's like, oh, we've already done a therapy style video. What if we did a POV video? And I was like, ooh, that's interesting. I haven't done a POV video before. So I think on that call, we determined that the POV would be from a third person so we could see Tegan and Sarah in the video. So I went off and brainstormed what I thought the video could be moment by moment. And I built that into what I always do. And that's a text edit. Smoking weed alone. What's kind of cool is the text edit that I sent them is like basically exactly what the final video ended up being. And if you're interested to see what my text edit actually looks like, I put a link down below. So now that I had the concept and a text edit and I knew what I wanted to see visually, the trick now was how was I going to pull this off? What camera, what technique am I going to utilize in order to get this like first person view that looks really cool? So the easy way to do this is just like strap a GoPro to my head or face and, and just run around and, and execute it that way. The issue with that is there's not as much control, not really good in low light, just everything's in focus. It's, it's super wide and less cinematic. And I wanted it to kind of mimic our eye a little bit more, which has natural depth that focuses in on an object and everything else kind of gets blurry around it. So I did some research. I went online, went on YouTube and like tried to find videos that looked similar. So I did find this YouTuber that had made POV content. We strapped a cinema camera to a motorcycle helmet and created a cinematic first person travel film. And had his own rig and was actually only a couple hours outside of Vancouver. So I reached out and tried to pitch them on the idea of, of, of collaborating on this, but ultimately they weren't available. There were some other issues. So I was like, F it, I'll do it myself. Luckily, I already own this FX3. It's got a really good lens, really good autofocus, but you need a rig to kind of strap it to your, to your face. But those helmet cams aren't as um, common as I thought they would be. Tried to find one in Vancouver, couldn't. Found a couple in Toronto, checked them both out and ended up renting one and just packing it in my bag and bring it to Vancouver. And to be honest, I had the rig, I had my camera, but I still didn't really know how to execute it. Okay, problem solving here in the room. Again, working on the helmet rig. So the solution was to mount my phone right in front of my face, <laughs> right here, and use the Bluetooth to be able to see the same signal that my camera was seeing. And got the shoulder rigs all the way down, I think. And I could also send a signal using my Raven Eye which is this little transmitter to send the signal to my iPad so that there was a viewing monitor on set. Focus, there it is. It's not good focus. I made some minor tweaks to the camera settings so that the focus responsiveness was kind of more accurate and the, the focus was right in the center. Okay, here's another test. This is uh, all the way 70 mil. 
24. My arms are stretched out. Comparatively, here is the 14 mil. Oh, wow. I don't even know what settings we're on. Maybe we're, my arms are way more noticeable. Oh, and uh, from a prep standpoint, location. I forgot to talk about location. So I popped online and looked at various apartments uh, for rent uh, for the day. And we found this space that I thought would be really cool. So we booked that place. I didn't want to see the location in person for the first time on the day of the shoot. So I went there the day before just to like scope it out and be more comfortable with the space. What I also did is kind of pre-shot some segments and kind of timed how long it took to get from one room to another room, specifically from the couch all the way to the bedroom and from the bedroom to the front door. Now back to the text edit. In order to pull this video off, the text edit had to be really, really specific. Everything kind of had to happen in a certain amount of time uh, where the hidden cut would occur. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, someone locked the door. <laughs> so each section I've labeled, I've color coded, I've got time stamp on how long each section is, and then I. Um, a countdown with a with a click track to tell me when that cut is gonna happen. <laughs> so that's how I built out the text edit and that's the playback on set. So I, I, I knew how it would all break down. For this video, the crew is, is, is small, very, very small. As the director, I'm also the shooter and the person in the video. Corey, my go-to gaffer in Vancouver, was on this shoot. That's clean. And it was basically just him and I, and they had their stylist and, and makeup and their manager who also helped out a lot, but that was it. The, the crew was really small. So I went out and bought some props the day before the video, which was like rolling paper, a cigarette lighter, ashtray, a little vape pen to add a little smoke, used oregano to be in the joint. So when it came to shooting the video, the hardest thing was actually the first shot. I f***ed up. Too early, my bad. Okay, try again. We did take after take after take after take because uh, there was a few moving parts. So I don't smoke, so even just lighting a cigarette properly is, is difficult for me. And then the other trick is you wanna make it seem like you're putting it to your mouth, but you're actually having to put it underneath the lens. And then Christine, the manager, had the vape pen and was exhaling over my shoulder to make it seem like I was exhaling. In hindsight, I wish I just jump cut the beginning so it didn't really matter and then get into a continuous action. Right now I'm just gonna play the video and do a play-by-play -play, um, commentary over it. So here we go. Smoking weed alone, I'm in the woods, wonder 